Hello, and welcome back to another video. Today I will be painting this Briar Irish Cob. As you probably noticed, we will be painting a Sabino pattern. I came across an Irish Cob named Lord Darius. Nope, not that one. Not that one either. There we go. He's one of the most gorgeous horses I've ever seen, so he will be my muse today. I will link the Facebook where I found these pictures and more below. This is one of my favorite molds, so I won't be doing any resculpting this time. And he's a perfect choice for depicting Lord Darius. But before doing any painting, the first step is to sand. This is kind of painful at first since this model only had a few rubs and looked pretty nice otherwise. But that's okay, it just incentivizes me to make him look even nicer. I sand off the logo as well as any obvious seams. I also go over the areas where the brown meets the white patches since the masking causes a bit of unevenness. I use my 400 grit sandpaper for this as well as just going over the body so the primer has a better grip. I will be trying out this Duplicolor Sandable Primer. I make sure to wear a proper mask even though I'm outside. I make some light passes, making sure not to get too close. I did another layer off camera after this dried. For the dark parts of the horse, I'll be using my Tester's Azteca airbrush, but this can easily be done with some regular acrylic and pastels. I'm using Model Air acrylic with a little bit of thinner. I make a base layer of gray with a touch of blue. I'm not painting the leg feathering since they will be painted white anyway. Once the first layer is dry, I go in with a darker gray and add shading. This shading is pretty high contrast, but this way it'll show better once all the white is added. It's also a little bit lighter than the real horse, so I can add more detail in the shading. And then I spend an hour cleaning my airbrush because it clogged. I do unspeakable things to this airbrush. I make sure to shade the mane and tail as well. Once that fully dried, I sealed it with my Mr. Super Clear matte spray off camera. And with that on, I can add my pan pastels for finer detail. I darken some areas up and add a touch of brown for dimension. I'm using an eyeshadow brush to help pick up more pigment. I seal that in with another layer of matte spray, and now we can add the white markings and really bring them to life. I'll be using this Golden Brand acrylic paint. I mix in a little water to thin it so that I don't have any brush strokes. I shade the groin area with layers of very watered down white, making sure to leave some black for the spots. Now it's time for the herring. Luckily I am using photo references that show the whole horse and can see the hair direction pretty easily. You can also use diagrams of herring patterns and pictures of different horses with noticeable patterns. I paint hairs in a rough outline of where the white will go. I switch between a few small brushes. I just use whatever feels best for that section. I sometimes blot off the brush after getting new paint so it goes on thin and not blobby.
When painting areas with black inside, I try and think of it more as outlining the black areas rather than filling it in with white. It's also good to remember that spots can combine together, so not all of them are perfectly round. As long as the hair is going in the right direction, they can really be any shape. Another thing to keep in mind is to not space things out too evenly. Nature is more random than that. I always have to stop myself from adding things in a pattern. It's also good to do different sizes. Remember to keep the hair length in mind. Longer strokes will mean longer hair. Areas like the groin and face won't have hair texture since the hair is so short there.
that's a lot of squinting at tiny hairs. Time for a pecan break. Okay, back to work. We're getting so close. He has some white in his tail, so I add various widths of hair and different levels of opacity. I make sure to follow the flow of the tail and imagine how the hair would be moving. I go over all of the white with at least five layers for full opacity. This also helps add more depth to the pattern. I seal it all in with my Mr. Super Clear to cut the shine of the white paint and to give it a grip for this next step. For the blushing, I'm using these chalk pastels. This isn't really the best since it's pretty hard and doesn't give a ton of pigment, but it's what I had to work with. I draw right onto the horse and blend it in with my fingers. Since the groin has black in it, I use my kneaded eraser to take off any color that got on it. For dirtying the feathers, I'll be using my nice pan pastels. This has a much richer pigment. In fact, too rich. I ended up having to add another layer of white over top since I was a little heavy handed. To build up the blush, I seal it again and add more layers. I think I did about three or four. I paint in the gaps where I couldn't reach with my finger. Next I add the eye whites. I cover most of the eye with white so I can add the black over top for a more natural shape. I start small with the pupils even though it looks totally crazy. This way I can slowly build up the circle. stripe of brown to the bottom of the eyes. I don't go too detailed since his eyes are quite dark in real life. Some of the feathering touches the black, so I paint on the long black hairs with watered down black acrylic. Next is time for the pedicure. I start with my Liquitex acrylic. Since it's thinned down, I do four layers. I dry with my hair dryer in between. With the base on, I can add the detail. I make striping with grays and browns. I go over these with a thin layer of white and dark brown to accentuate the frog and the hoof tips. Off camera, I spray another matte layer to seal everything. Now I can gloss the eyes and hooves with some Liquitex gloss.
And now he's all finished. Let's see how it all came out. Here's the before. And here's the after. I think he came out pretty close to the real thing, and I'm really proud. Thank you for watching! I hope you learned something! Make sure to boop that like button and subscribe for more projects!